And today we are going to hear from Stanford thought leaders who bridge the deep knowledge in both human sciences and information technologies. Their research is defining the new intellectual frontiers and it's forging insights for the transformation of education and commerce and entertainment. It's all aimed at enhancing and augmenting and improving the relationship between people and technology. And to launch our program today, I'd like to introduce Dean Claude Steele, Dean of the Stanford Graduate School of Education. We've lassoed him back from Columbia University where he was the 21st provost. And uh, now in his second year back at Stanford, um, he brings the rich background of a social scientist, social psychologist with a very deep commitment to the problems of social significance. And that is very much what we're about here at MediaX. Dean Steele, thank you for joining us today and welcome. Well, uh, thank you and good morning to everybody. Uh, I don't have to reintroduce myself. Um, it's a great pleasure to uh, join Martha uh, in welcoming you to this Media X 2013 conference. I, I, I am told it is the 10th anniversary, so uh, there's an element of celebration in this of 10 years of, of existence of this, so we're, we're, we're proud about that. Uh, as as uh, Martha has, has pointed out, uh, today will be an opportunity to hear from uh, Stanford thought leaders from across many uh, disciplines who uh, work at this business of bridging deep knowledge about the human sciences to information technology. So uh, that is the general thrust of the, the event, as I'm sure you know. Uh, uh, I am uh, probably speaking to the when I say this, but I think it's, it is worth stressing that this research uh, is indeed defining new intellectual frontiers and forging insights for the transformation of several major areas of life, education, business, health, healthcare, entertainment, areas where technological innovation, especially in education, I believe, uh, offers some of the most important rays of hope for a better future. Uh, I'm a research psych psychologist, as, as Martha mentioned, uh, and when I think about the contributions that technology can make to an entire field, uh, I have a very vivid example in mind. Uh, I think about the impact of fMRI research, neuroimaging research, on the science of psychology. I can clearly remember when, what scientific psychology was like before we had neuroimaging and what it is, and I can contrast that to what it is like now. Before neuroimaging, psychology was, of course, a very powerful science. Uh, it had developed highly sophisticated behavioral, cognitive, perceptual measures that enabled and still enable powerful inferences about psychological functioning. But in an important way, as a science, we were stranded pretty much on the outside of that functioning, uh, restricted as we were to the measurement of behavior. And having to learn about psychological functioning, underlying psychological functioning, by making inferences uh, about it, uh, albeit well-reasoned, empirically guided inferences. What neuroimaging brought to this science was the ability to measure brain activity itself as it corresponds to mental activity, to thought, to cognitive functioning, and to behavior. Uh, the yield for this new technological capacity was interestingly not immediate. <laughs> uh, in the early years, it was uh, rather sporadic. But in time, and not that much time, it has transformed the field, opening up completely new questions, uh, providing transformingly clear answers to age-old contentions about the nature of the human psyche, and introducing a whole new language with which to describe and understand human psychology. <clears throat> Technology can have this kind of transformative effect. Uh, we've all lived long enough to see examples of this, uh, to experience such effects, and I believe it can have this kind of an effect in education. And as much as any part of life, health, uh, business, entertainment, education needs the transformations that technology can bring. The international competitiveness of our society, the quality of our civil life, 
depend on us finding ways to deliver good education to a broader sector of our society. Technology can clearly help with this. It is this reality that is at the root of the graduate school's commitment to being a world leader in groundbreaking cross-disciplinary inquiries and fost that foster technology's contribution to education and to human learning more generally. And the school uh, uh, fully recognizes that the pursuit of this goal is fostered by uh, collaboration. Uh, collaboration both across disciplines but also between the business and university communities. These partnerships, partnerships that of the sort enabled by Media X, are critical to us achieving our goals and to our making the kinds of contribution to education that we know is critical. I'm excited to offer my welcome uh, to this conference that celebrates 10 years of precisely this kind of collaboration. It's an exciting enterprise. This effort and the work you do, we see as central to our mission as a graduate school of education. We're excited to have you here today. We hope you and anticipate that you will be excited to be here today, uh, that this will be a, a very idea-generating and rich day for you. So uh, again, I, I offer my welcome. Um, with all that said, let me now turn the ceremony over to uh, Roy P., who is uh, one of our faculty members and who, as you know, has been a real spearhead of this enterprise in, uh, in, in our school. He will give you a more specific, detailed uh, description of uh, all the accomplishments that Media X has, has uh, had over the, the, the number of years. So with no further ado, Roy, thank you. Tenth anniversary. Um, today's conference is a celebration of discovery of uh, collaborations over this past decade and hints of those to follow. As the industry partners program of our HDAR Institute, MediaX is built on the belief that in the power of collaboration between researchers and campus around the world and on industry. We take our strength from Stanford's academic programs, the faculty members, the courses, the research programs that receive support from federal agencies and private foundations. Most importantly, the talented young students and researchers that come to Stanford for study. At Stanford, we're able to go deeper and wider than is practical for most companies. It's the nature of a university. One of these researchers has just returned to Stanford following his doctoral studies at MIT. Almost 10 years ago, MediaX awarded Michael Bernstein, a senior in computer science at the time, a travel grant to present his first academic paper. That was an enabling experience. He completed his bachelor's degree at Stanford and was accepted at MIT for graduate studies. And just yesterday, we celebrated him last night, he returned to Stanford as an assistant professor in computer science. His research on social computing is just loaded with new insights about crowdsourcing, friend sourcing, patterns of influence in online communities. And Michael says that his early awareness of industry's interest in his work created an appetite for the relevance of his research work. This mindset for relevance influenced his choice of research topics and is likely to influence the way he teaches and continues his research to Stanford. We think this is not atypical. Hiroshi Nakajima met Byron Reeves and Cliff Nass, several of our very active professors in Media X, in November 1997, just after they had published their foundational book, The Media Equation. His company, Amran, in Japan, was the first strategic partner for Media X, and out of that collaboration came the concepts of a user interface that has social intelligence and has its own voice. You'll hear from Nakajima-san at lunch today as he talks about how Amran has used these Media X discovery collaborations for systems healthcare. You'll hear tonight from Larry Lessig, returning to Stanford for the first time since he closed out his work on Creative Commons and moved to Harvard. The Creative Commons copyright conventions simply transformed user-generated content by creating ownership and use designations that were easy to understand and easy to use. Many tens of millions of media objects these days carry the Creative Commons copyright unrestrictions. And this innovation set the tone 
of copyright expectations for, I think, much of this century. In 2008, on one of his MediaX projects, Virtual Jurisdictions, his team explored the intersection of the virtual and physical worlds, and the results of their research work have set a foundation for important inquiries now underway on legal rights in the digital realm. <coughs> After giving Creative Commons to the world, Lessig has gone on to tackle what he describes, and we'll talk about tonight, as forbidden problems, such as corruption. He'll describe how technology, transparency, and community are opening new opportunities for democracy. In this Wordle tag cloud, you see uh, the traces of every proposal that's ever been sent for uh, any of the RFPs on the Stanford campus to MediaX strategic partnering challenges. These projects have given Stanford faculty member, their undergrads, their grads, occasionally postdocs as well, opportunities to test bold new concepts and leverage millions of research dollars across their laboratories. The MediaX themes are open to all Stanford researchers that have an interest in this intersection of human sciences and information technology and innovation. The research network of MediaX has included civil and environmental engineering, law, business, medicine, humanities and science, education, engineering, 16 departments all told, and nearly 100 researchers, and only a few are shown here. MediaX operates as a member-supported organization. Without company support, it would not happen. The generous contributions of companies such as Cisco, Dynapon Printing, Konica Minolta, Nokia, Amron, NTT, Philips, the Scottish Enterprise, and Time Warner have all enabled MediaX research themes, where we issue RFPs and faculty respond across their departmental boundaries. We've gotten global perspectives from new member companies such as Cervantes in Hong Kong, ASERP and Sabia Experience in Brazil, Edelman Worldwide, and spin-offs such as Persuasion, API in the Netherlands, and Cipex in Palo Alto all energizing this MediaX discovery network with relationship capital. So in short, MediaX has been playing a key role as a catalyst at Stanford, a broker role, identifying opportunities for discovery collaborations on people and technology with the business community, and through these collaborations, Stanford researchers and MediaX member companies are able to do something together that neither of them could do as well independently. And so to all current and previous members of MediaX, we say thank you. A number of you are in the audience today. A lot of great challenges remain. We're enthused about that. We're eager to share our experiences with you, and we look forward to continued collaborations. Welcome. <laughs>